How you doing, boss? Boss, how about developing something? Marker placed. Marker placed. Marker placed. Whatever supplies you need, just let us know, boss. Boss, let's have a mock pad. Combat support. Just let us know. Train with me, boss. Thank you, boss. You have arrived at your destination. Send me out on a mission, boss. Roger. This is Pequot. Arriving shortly at LZ. Forgive me, but my schedule has changed. The time for grace and good manners has now run out. Please. Torture will not work on me. Shh. You said Skullface ordered you to weaponize the vocal cord parasites. But you also said he wasn't the reason. And he wasn't. I was seduced by the parasites. That is a fact. How? You mean from your curiosity as a scientist? That I cannot deny. But there is more to it. The story goes back to the 19th century. To my earliest memory. One day, a man from the government visited our Hogan. Our home. I cried as he yanked me from my mother's arms and took me away to an Indian boarding school. From that day forward, I became... George. This was the name my teacher gave me. I was forced to give up my Diné name. Forbidden from speaking anything but English. If we dared utter a word of filthy Navajo, the teacher made us eat a bar of soap. Yeah, that was the U.S. government's education policy for Native Americans. 
To erase our words was like erasing our people. Their education was tantamount to Please ethnic cleansing. Attention. Over time, the overt persecution of our language stopped. But to this day, it continues to be eaten away by the lingua franca, that is English. Many of the Diné outside the reservations can speak Please nothing attend. else. And it isn't just our language. Across the world, minority languages are being destroyed by dominant languages. Many are on the verge of extinction. Mm. Enter the vocal cord parasites. Yes, you I began thinking that. that minority languages needed some sort of deterrent against dominant languages. In order that they, that their peoples and cultures would survive. It was then that I came across literature at the foundation claiming that man acquired language thanks to a type of parasite, one that distinguishes between languages as a precursor to reproduction. If I could just resurrect it, make it more pathogenic, I would have my deterrent against English, but I failed to hide that aim from Skullface. He noticed. Yes. I wanted to retaliate against the English language. Though never did I intend to actually use it as he planned. You know how the story ends. I was forced to study how to make the parasites compatible Stop with early. all I'm the on. world's languages. All but English. However, he in fact secretly oh. isolated an English strain. I will not be held prisoner by the man's phantom. The English strain must not be allowed to exist either. Boss, dispatch me on my next mission. Boss! You have arrived at your destination. Boss. This is Pequot. Arriving shortly at LZ. This is Pequot. On station at LZ. The ethnic cleansing parasites attempt to rob man of his words. Such irony. It was the vocal cord parasite that gave words to him in the first place. Ancient man had no language, unable to produce complex sounds due to the structure of the throat. He could communicate only through simple vocalizations and gestures. Then the vocal cord parasites infected his larynx. Man's transition to walking upright did not gift him solely with intelligence, but also with his voice. At the time, the vocal cord parasites never harmed man. They merely took a small measure of nourishment. In fact, you could call it a symbiotic relationship. Some animal species use particular vocalization patterns to attract a female and reproduce. Songbirds, certain insects, and also the vocal cord parasites. The difference is that the parasites themselves did not produce sounds. Rather, they had their hosts, man, do it for them. Once secure on the human host vocal cords, a male vocal cord parasite caused the host to produce Please a certain sound pattern, project. something like a warble of a bird. Meanwhile, females parasitizing other host pharynxes need only wait upon hearing the sound pattern of an attractive mate. They would manipulate their hosts into making contact with the person it came from. The female traveled through his host's saliva to the other host's vocal cords where the male was waiting and the pair copulated. We can only imagine how the female manipulated his host, but it was probably through smell. Smells travel directly to the limbic system via the olfactory cilia in the nasal cavity. 
volatile compounds released by the female would stimulate the limbic system, which controls instincts, making the host feel amorous. This kind of sexual selection naturally led to competition between the male parasites. Males that had their hosts produce sounds perceived by females as more attractive succeeded in copulating and producing offspring. Evolutionary traits caused by sexual selection are curious. The peacock's feathers, the mannequin's dance, the firefly's luminescence pattern. Even with courtship behaviors that are not advantageous to survival, those individuals that excel in them produce offspring, and it escalates with each generation. The same was true of the vocal cord parasites. Courtship vocalization rhythms and intonations became more sophisticated, and in order for man to produce such sounds, they had to alter his vocal organs. By lowering the position of the larynx and developing resonating chambers, they enabled more complex pronunciations. But that was not all. The vocal cord parasites activated a transcription factor that would later control man's language ability. How you doing, a boss? protein that due to its appearance is called 4 kid box protein P2, or Fox P2. Activating this transcription factor led to the development of brain function capable of creating sophisticated Boss, frequency changes. This was the, the pinnacle of the vocal cord parasite's prosperity. However, this sophisticated Boss. pronunciation control was too useful for man to ignore. Boss. Once human Boss. sexual activity ceased to be only seasonal, and having lost pigment-based sexual characteristics, distinctive vocalizations became the most effective means for humans to attract mates as well. Combined with logic pathways hardwired into the brain, or universal grammar, it was not long before advanced communication was possible. This was the birth of language. Luckily for man, it was around this time that a particular retrovirus was circulating. While not lethal, it infected not only man, but the vocal cord parasites as well. It is presumed that this virus removed part of the parasite's DNA and reverse transcribed it into man's reproductive cells. It was a factor. Among the genes it transcribed were the ones responsible for the production of language. The vocal cord parasites vocalization genes were written into the human genome. The parasites were no longer of any use to man now. Man could use his voice as he pleased when he pleased, hindering the parasites courtship vocalizations. Having lost their opportunity to reproduce, the parasites died out, leaving behind only the transcribed genes. The vocal cords were once in symbiosis with man. Its genes even became a part of his. Humans and parasites are extremely close. As such, it would be extremely difficult for man's immune system to eliminate the vocal cord parasites. Even cutting them out will be no simple matter. Which is exactly why these ethnic cleansing parasites are such a formidable weapon. The rise of the vocal cord parasites goes back approximately 300 million years to the Permian period. At that time, they were not even parasites, but predatory autotrophs. They are believed to have been the common ancestor to the Pentestamida and the Cyclops genus of copepods. However, Earth's environment underwent...